I would like to welcome our management, Honorable Chairman of Muhammad Sadak Trust, Al-H. Azam Muhammad Yusuf and Janaba Azam H. Sarmila, Secretary of Muhammad Sadak Trust. Next, I warm welcome goes to our beloved principal, Dr. A.R. Nadra Banu Kamal, who is the backbone of our college. She is always think about betterment of our college and our students' education and career. She is a moral supporter for us. I welcome ma'am. Next, I cordially welcome our resource person of this faculty development program, Adya Bansar, a writer, teacher, teacher trainer, director of Aleph Academy, GEO Aleph Academy of Education Service Limited, Hong Kong. She has completed MS Zoology, MA English, BGD. In the year of 2019 and 20, she offered a scholastic performance and enhanced employability development program to faculty in our college and also offered so many programs in various schools and colleges. I'm very glad and proud to welcome such eminent resource person today. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I would like to welcome all the participants who are attending this FTP. Now I give a short introduction about our college. Mohammed Sadha Hamid College of Arts and Science for Women started in 2018 and offered six courses, BA English, BSc Mathematics, BSc Computer Science, BCA, BSc IT, and BCom with Computer Applications. Now our college staffs are well experienced and qualified in our, in, in our information technology department, providing several faculty development programs and several facilities to develop to students like a smart class, a spacious lab facilities and online classes and also educations also we're conducting many competitions to improve the students uh, digital creativity mind. Thank you. All the participants kindly follow the instruction, mute your video, video and audio and question answer session towards the end. You can post your questions only through the live chat box. Avoid unnecessary charts during the presentation the assignments form will be posted in the chat box at the end of the sessions. Don't interrupt the speaker during the presentations. The participants should be attend all the three days and complete your assignments. Then only you will get the certificate. Once again, I welcome you all. Then I kindly invite to our principal, Dr. A. R. Nadra Banu Kamal to address the gathering. Welcome, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu and a happy day to all of you. I extend my hearty welcome to the resource person, Sister Atya Bansala, and all the participants who have joined us through this webinar. Bill Gates, co-founder of Microsoft says that leader will be those who empower others. And we as a teacher are the facilitators of students learning and creator of productive classrooms environment in which students can develop the skills they might need at present or in future. So our role is also to empower our students. Education in the 21st century highlights globalization and internationalization. National curricula around the world emphasizes the need for century skills. There is a broad consensus that leaders and future employees need competency such as critical thinking and collaboration. But today's education curricula call for more route learning and memorization. The role as a teacher at present can be a great way to pay individual attention to students. It can also allow a teacher to tailor make a course to fit specific students' needs. However, it can also lead to a student becoming too dependent or even too comfortable with one teacher and one method or a style of teaching. The education system must be outfitted with the prerequisites of ICT resources, both hardware and software, and curricula must be designed to promote a collaborative learning center environment to which students will relate and respond. The 21st century classroom should be created on the desire that students experience what they require 
to enter the 21st century workplace and live in the global environment. Lectures on the one on single subject at a time where which, which was the norm in the past, but today collaboration is the thread of all students' learning. For instance, the collaborative project-based approach ensures that the all students and reach students with engaging lesson plans, which will enhance their critical thinking, problem solving, reasoning, analyzing, interpretation, synthesizing, information, research skills, and practicing, interrogative questions, creativity, curiosity, etc., etc. ICT does not automatically approach uh, or improve our teaching uh, and learning, but <laughs> teacher must do some innovations in order to motivate the learners. The improvement of the teaching learning process depends upon the strategy used by the teacher. Definitely, technology will help teachers facilitate effective teaching. The Department of IT has rightly identified the topic, and I appreciate the head of the Department of Information Technology, Mrs. Priyanga, and Assistant Professor, Ms. Rosina, for all the steps taken and utilizing the technology efficiently for conducting this webinar. I thank our management, the chairman of our Mohammed Sadak Trust, Alhaj Mohammed Yusuf, secretary, Madam Sharmila, and the executive director, Mrs. Hamid Ibrahim, for their encouragement, motivation, and being with us as a support. This faculty development program will help us to know some of the 21st century skills to be possessed by the on-service teachers. Why I say some is because of the time constraint and our skillful resource person will cover them very productively. Let's make the best use of this time because the best way to predict the future is to create it and let's be a part of it. Thank you. I now hand over the session to Ms. Priyanga to continue with the program. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Now we hand over the session to our resource person, Adya Bansala, to take over the session, ma'am. Thank you so much, sister. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. And of course, namaste, vanakkam, good. Ah, I don't know what time zone everyone is. For me, it is afternoon. So it is good afternoon from here. And let us begin. What can we do in next 15 minutes? Uh, let me get started. Uh, slide here. Okay. What we are going to do today is, as sister said, we have to, as teachers, we have to make uh, as much use of teaching skills as we can. So let's start. This is my project, Teaching and Learning Enhancement Program, for which I'm very happy to help people. And three days webinar, we'll have uh, day one, we'll, and we'll tackle three, Domain of Learning, Bloom's Taxonomy and Higher Order Thinking Skills. And day two, we will go into critical thinking and also critical reading and metacognitive skills that hopefully will promote autonomous learning skills in our students. And then day three, we'll take storytelling techniques to promote creativity. Today's topic is 21st century teaching skills, not just 21st century skills. And there is a difference. So let's see how we can handle this topic. Uh, we'll go about it like this. We'll first look at what do we mean by 21st century teaching skills. Then we'll look at what makes 21st century different from previous 20th centuries. And we'll look at what are 21st century skills one by one, but the list is long, but we'll look at some prominent ones and what tools teachers can use to integrate 21st century skills into learning tasks without deviating from the syllabus. This is the biggest problem for teachers. We cannot deviate from the syllabus. And lastly, we we'll look at some of the examples, how we can design learning tasks involving uh, multiple learning skills for students. So let's see. What do we mean by 21st century teaching skills? Let us begin from ABC, that is what is education. Education is defined as transfer of knowledge 
and skills, not just knowledge, but knowledge and skills from teachers to students. And transfer is the word on which we have to emphasize because that is where the problem comes. Teachers have lots of skills, lots of knowledge, but how do we transfer it to our students? And when we talk about knowledge, we actually refer to curriculum, syllabus, subject, and when we talk about skills, it's really important because how to do something is also important along with knowledge. If we take, you know, reading as knowledge, then read and write both will become skills. So knowledge and skills go hand in hand. And this is what Teachers have been regularly updating their knowledge. They were improving qualifications by going to the universities and colleges and uh, professional development programs. Teachers have been learning new pedagogy. They can handle flipped classroom and they are learning about new curriculum like STEM. This is only last 20 years. The STEM STEAM now it has become STREAM and the STREAM has also become STEM was science, technology, engineering, and maths. Then it became STEAM. It became science, technology, engineering, art, and maths. Then it became STREAM, science, technology, reading, engineering, art, and math. Now there are variations coming. Instead of reading, others are taking robotics. So it depends on what is the need of the educational institute and the world at large. Now this is something very new, streaming, where they are going science, technology, research, engineering, arts, maths, and innovation, i.e. is for innovation. So focus of this webinar will be skills that teachers need or will need because 21st century has already begun. The skills that teachers need or will need to transfer knowledge to their the students in the 21st century. There are two aspects to this. One, they will need, and the second is 21st century skills that teachers will teach to their, to their students. Because teachers have to transfer knowledge and skills. So teachers need the skills and they also need to pass it on to their students. Okay, so we begin by what is a skill? I would suggest, uh, Sister Priyanka, you can keep an eye on the live chat. And here is a question. Which of these is not a skill? Dying, playing, learning, dying, writing, cooking. Okay. Which one? Just let me know what answers we are getting. Dying answer. Um, participants typing answer is dying. Man. Which dying? There are two dying. Two dying. D Y D I N G. Yes. Some of them. Some of them told D Y I N G. Some of them told D Y E I N G. Okay, fantastic. This is what I tried to confuse people. <laughs> 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 because this dyeing is completely different from this dyeing. This <laughs> dye we use to dye clothes, you know. You, uh, you, have a, you have a white sari, you don't want to have this white sari, very difficult to maintain. So you go to the market, you find a dyer and you give it and say, okay, yes, uh, I make it blue and he'll do it. This is this dyeing. So this just cannot be, this. this is of course dying. And let's see why this dying is a skill or not a skill. Let's look at that. Why dying is not a skill? We cannot learn how to die naturally. We are talking about dying, not committing suicide. We cannot learn. It's not possible I decide if I stop breathing, I'll die. No, I may still not die. I can stop breathing and then I'll stop, start breathing again. We do not require any special training and knowledge to die. Religions talk about what happens after dying, but no religion teaches you, you know, how to die. Some have, but what you can recite when you are dying, you know, that's completely different thing. We are talking about 
the act of dying. We cannot practice dying again and again and become expert in dying. Once we are dead, finish. We have no control over dying. Even if we want to live, we cannot. Its time is up. And why writing is a skill? Let us take one example writing. We can learn how to write. We need a spatial training and knowledge to learn how to write. And we can practice writing again and again until we become expert writers. And we have control over our learning how to write. If you don't practice, no, you don't learn. If you don't um, form your words properly, you will not learn how you use words. That is all part of writing, not just the um, act of writing on a paper or on a, a computer. You also need to formulate how do I make my sentence? How do I start my sentence? How do I add it? Which verb should I use? Which noun should I use? A lot goes on in learning how to write. So. What we have decided here, that a skill must, a skill is what we can learn. And this is true, all skills can, we can learn all skills, including thinking skills. And we need a spatial training. We have learned that spatial training and knowledge. When we talk about a spatial training, we actually mean what strategy should I need to do this. In case of writing, we should know how to hold the pen and how to move our hand and write A and then pick up and write B. So that is a special training. And we must practice it again and again until we become expert and we have control over how much we want to learn. You want to learn little, you'll learn little. You want to learn more, you'll learn more. So skills have this we need to learn and we should have a special training and knowledge to learn that skill and to become perfect we must practice because we have a control how much we want to learn now keeping all this in mind let us see what has happened in 21st century why 21st century is so different from the previous 20 centuries now three things have happened in the 21st century number one the world around us has begun, began to change at a tremendous speed. The way we live is changing by the decade. Now, maybe even by months, actually, when we come down a few minutes later, we'll talk about how it has changed from one month to another. It is not February or March. There, is, there was no lockdown. The world was different. The speed of creating new knowledge has increased many folds because new research is coming almost every week. And dissemination of knowledge has become very fast. With a click, now imagine in 11, 12 centuries, people were writing by hand. Writing 800 pages was difficult. Now you can write 800 pages, you can print them with a click, you can share. So three things have happened. Our life is changing. Creation of knowledge has increased and dissemination of knowledge has also increased rapidly. So we put it here, information explosion, three characteristics of 21st century information explosion, rapid increase in creating knowledge, that is research and rapidly improving technology. If anyone has a disagreement, please let me know, Sister Priyanka. <laughs> If anyone has a disagreement, no? No? Okay, so we move on. Just to imagine how much life has changed. In 1998, 99, even in 2000, we could recognize this is a telephone. You show it to any child today and they'll ask you, what is it? They don't know what it is. Today, telephone is this, which is less of a telephone, more of a whole computer. It takes photographs for you. You can um, make videos. You can store your photos. 
and you can join a seminar, webinar, you can organize a webinar. It is, it does almost everything for you. It has your passwords. Now, how this, there are three lines here. Developing world is, world is this one, red. It has increased, how much? 2014, we only have data until 2014. And today is 2020, so it must have gone up further. This is the developed world, and this is the world as such, average of developed and developing world. world. If one gadget, telephone has changed so much, so much, imagine what life is like. If we look at our life, yeah, this 21st century woman, just see. She must be a village woman. She has a computer. She has a phone also. And she can use. Maybe there is no internet or what. I don't know why she needs both uh, telephone and computer. She could use only one of them to talk. But this is what we mean. Everyone needs to know 21st century skills now. Looking at what has happened in last 20 years. Internet explosion everybody has got internet email which we never knew is now email nobody writes letters youtube it's a very very new thing youtube now we cannot live without youtube even if you want to uh, cook something you go on youtube and you look at few recipes and you watch them and then you go and cook virtual classroom distant learning was always being carried out in some way or the other but virtual classroom has made it very, very easy now. Smartphones, without the smartphones, virtual classroom is no use. You cannot connect. People are doing online shopping. Drone warfare. 2003, when America invaded Iraq, this was not their drone. When the war was still going on, drones came and now drones are used to drop bombs in here and there. So many of them have been dropped on Afghanistan too. So this is a completely new form of warfare has started. Robots. Actually, I saw in this, when lockdown started in Bangalore, they had put a robot, you know, with sanitizer. So anybody entering, this robot offers sanitizers. Tablets, the, the computer tablets, you can use them. So easy to hold, so easy to carry with you. And what has happened now? Lockdown across the world. Nobody ever imagined this may happen. World will be like this. International travel completely stopped. Pass by any airport and you will see all aeroplanes are sitting there in the hangar. Hajj is canceled. Some people will go and carry out the ritual, but it is not the same like every year. And the biggest thing that has happened is COVID-19. So world has almost changed and in these decades, two decades or two, less than three decades, we got how much? WhatsApp, email, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. And these are only, this is, these are actually the old ones. The new ones are coming every day. What I find very interesting is the Zoom. Until March end, Zoom was not free. It is only after lockdown started, Zoom made it free. For 100 participants, 40 plus 40 minutes. And this is so amazing that as soon as Zoom became free, experts, people started giving free educational webinars, started sharing like we are doing now. And each webinar is often attended by 100 people. Yeah, this, uh, this is also full attendance, 100. And I'm sure people are connected on YouTube too. And there are others who connect to 400, 500 people. Now, it's a very interesting time for teachers. Because what we always dreamt that nobody is listening to us. How do we educate people? How do we educate ourselves? All this is now possible because of Zoom. And because Zoom is free. Because Zoom is free, others also made free. You know, Google has. Google team and others. So now uh, choice is available. 
with so much change, so much change. Like 1990s looks like 100 years ago. When world is changing so much, what Bernie Trilling and Charles Feder, they have written a book recently, 21st Century Skills, Learning for Life in Our Times. And I love this quote from the book. They say, world has changed so fundamentally in the last few decades, not few hundred years, in the last few decades that the roles of learning and education in day-to-day -day living have also changed forever. So we have to keep this in mind. Our life as it was in 2005 or 2010 is not the same as it is now in 2020. So what are 21st century skills? Now this organization for economic cooperation and development, in short, we call it OECD. They say 21st century skills are those skills that throw that transform students into versalists. Now, who are versalists? Versalists are students who can apply depth of skill, a progressively widening scope of situations and experiences. Gaining new competency, what they have learned in the university is fine, but now they have to be competent enough to learn new competencies build relationships and assume new roles. Look at this paper. This was presented only three years ago, February 2017. And this is what we want our students to be, which is a huge challenge. <laughs> so here they have not given you which skills. Let us see which skills. Of course, the detailed paper has some. L these, I have put them in alphabetical order. Accountability, collaboration, creative thinking skills, critical thinking, communication, financial literacy, and I have made it, put it in the large font because I'll talk about it in a minute. Flexibility, that is negotiating skills, information literacy, leadership, life skills, adapting to new situations, cross-cultural understanding. Dr. Nadira was talking about globalization. If we do not have any cross-cultural understanding, we cannot negotiate and talk to people. We should know what is, how to behave in their culture. Productivity, taking initiative, accepting responsibility, team building skills, media literacy. And we'll talk about all the media literacy. Actually, we'll talk tomorrow. Problem solving. Again, we'll talk tomorrow. Technology literacy, that is IT skills, self-direction, becoming independent learner, autonomous learner, social skills. So social skills, again, extremely important, whether you live in a country which is globalized or non-globalized. You need that. But there are several versions of skills needed in the 21st century, several other lists. This is just one of them. And financial literacy, just hold on for a second and I'll talk about it. This is another sample. And I like it because it has four C's, you know, creativity, critical, communicative skills and collaborative skills. So they have put it together. Creativity skills to generate multiple ideas, to explore new solutions for existing problems, to ask challenging questions, to find ways to collaborate with others, to complete a given task on time, etc. Collaborative skills to collaborate, to cooperate with others, which is becoming more and more difficult. If we don't really try to focus on this, people are not able to collaborate, cooperate with each other, to express opinion and emotions appropriately, to lead a team and be part of a team, to collaborate using digital media, to be flexible in approach in negotiations. Some people are so hard in negotiations that they never really discuss an outcome. To be responsive to others' opinions and needs. What I think is important, but what others think is also important, equally important. 
to give and accept constructive feedback. I mean, especially for teachers, it is important because most of the time we are telling the students what to do, what not to do. It is, if we get feedback from students, not just the form, you know, is it, is it you just go pick up one, but real constructive feedback, it will help us improve as teachers. Critical thinking skills, what will be covered in those? Discover new ideas, analyze information critically, which we'll do tomorrow, inshallah. To interpret uh, information for bias, to check facts, to use reasoning, which people have forgotten now. There is, I don't know why it has become a world phenomenon. People are not using reasoning to find out of the box solutions, etc., cetera, et cetera. Communication skills to be an active listener, to give effective oral presentation to audience from diverse background. Because like, we don't know who's where in which town, and but all of us are grouped together. We are together in this webinar. And people have different backgrounds from North India, from South India, within India, outside India. To meaningfully engage in a conversation. It's not kitty party where people, you know, just talk about nonsense and go home. Meaningfully engage. To inform, support arguments and claims, and to explain one's point of view. This is so important in having a harmony in a society when you can explain your point of view and support it with arguments. We can build a better world. Let's see. This is sample three. Same thing, 21st century skills. And it has its own charm. They have put it like three. I have not done it. I have borrowed it, taken it from somewhere else. Foundational knowledge, what the students will need to know, they'll need to know digital or IT, ICT lit literacy, information and communication technology, which the schools, colleges are doing. Uh, core content knowledge, syllabus, exams, etc. Cross-disciplinary knowledge, like in environmental studies and all people are doing some kind of cross-disciplinary uh, knowledge. They are teaching cross-disciplinary uh, modules to students. Uh, somebody, somebody is, and somebody is writing on my screen. And we need humanistic knowledge to value. This is like, this part is being done, job skills. What about life skills? Not enough attention. Ethical and emotional awareness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not enough. We are not doing enough. Cultural competence. All cultures are different. Why are we thinking my culture is big and the other person's culture is not good enough? We have to accept everybody's culture. Cultures are different. Let me see somebody is writing on my disable. Annotation, okay, but how do I erase it? And meta knowledge. This meta knowledge is important. What it is, meta knowledge is <clears throat> knowledge that you have. Knowledge that you have about what others know and do not know. Professor and third point about meta knowledge is. It is knowledge about what information others need. Knowledge that you have, knowledge that you have about what others know and do not know, and knowledge about what others need. And this is where the whole marketing business works. But we can use it for education purposes, for um, building more harmonious societies. <clears throat> Part of meta knowledge is creativity and innovation, problem solving and critical thinking, communication and collaboration. <clears throat> As I told you, just hold on for a second and I'll talk about- Arunesh, Arunesh sir, kindly mute your video and audio. Yeah. 
So I want to tell you two, two, just two words. One, IT skills, <clears throat> whatever we teach our students, it has a very short shelf life because so much innovation is taking place. And teachers will need to continuously update their IT skills throughout their teaching career. Like nobody use floppies now, nobody use CD writers. They have all become obsolete. And now this part, which I told you, I'll talk about it in a minute, that is financial literacy. This is some 21st century skills list include financial literacy, but it is usually not put. Financial literacy will be an extremely important skill to survive in the 21st century. And teachers must acquire financial literacy, the skills beyond operating a bank account or investing in the stock markets. Why? This is a friend of mine, Sophie. She lives somewhere in US, I don't remember which town. She has this website, A and B makes three. This is a and b make three dot org. And look at what her tagline is fighting poverty through financial literacy. We are not talking about just investing money in the stock market. She is doing it. She runs this, uh, how to say it? It's a, it's a, it's not exactly a, it's a social enterprise she has through which she teaches money management. Money, her program is helping people get out of debt, manage expenses, save, set up businesses, etc. And this is all from her website, striving to reduce poverty and vulnerability through financial education. Her program, Vision, a world where money is a tool to do ourselves and our communities rather than a goal or a tool of oppression where financial hardships do not prevent children and adults from getting education and where money is a tool to grow our most precious asset that is ourselves. And this, her total program is based on these principles. Money is social. When we spend, save, invest or run a business, it impacts others. For us, a financially literate person is someone who does not harm others when managing money? I mean, I just want to ask, isn't it a fantastic program if we teach this? Where money does not harm others, when you, man you manage your money in such a way that it doesn't harm others. If you have time, please see it. And um, Sister Priyanka and others, if you want to get in touch with us, with her, you can, of course, find her address or you can contact me. Thank you. And this. Now we come to the main aspect. The tools that teachers need to integrate 21st century skills into everyday learning tasks without deviating from the syllabus. How we can do it? The students find a task meaningful if it can engage them Number one, intellectually, number two, emotionally, and number three, physically, all three. Not just intellectually, not just emotionally, not just physically. How can we do that? So the tool one, it is an old tool, domains of learning. Most of us know what they are. Three domains of learning are psychomotor, that is physical activity, cognitive skills, of mind, their thinking skills, and affective feelings and emotions. And this, most of the time we ignore these feelings and emotions, but this is where attitudes are formed. People get motivated, people acquire values, and they are willing to participate in their education, in doing something for the world at large. So one tool is we can use this, um, what do we call three domains of learning in our learning tasks. Developing 
the students' higher order thinking skills we can do by engaging them. What we can do by engaging them intellectually, what we can do is we can use Bloom's taxonomy. Now, Bloom's taxonomy is now old, honestly. And it has been criticized for so many other things. Because when Bloom proposed this, he had this idea that first you must learn remembering, then only you will learn understanding, then you will learn applying, then you cannot simply go and learn um, understanding without remembering. But now with the scans, MRI scans and other uh, advances in technology, we can look at the brain as somebody is learning. Here's a small child, you can look at the brain, which side is lighting, which side is not lighting. So, but it has a use, Bloom's taxonomy. I don't agree completely with complete Bloom's taxonomy, but it has a use and we'll use it. These six sections are called six domains of Bloom's taxonomy. And there, this Bloom's taxonomy is actually part of cognitive skills. These are also proposed by Bloom, Benjamin Bloom. These are also called six domains of educational goals because um, education always has a goal. You don't give your students something to do which, is, which has no goal. And because education finally leads to creation of knowledge, acquisition of knowledge. So these are also called six domains of knowledge. How to remember this? Actually, you know, what you can do is we can make an acronym because we'll find how we can use it. Remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. According to Benjamin Bloom, as we go up, people use it more often. But the top one, creating people use it less, less often. But these are very, very highly useful to people. The upper domains, these are not so useful as remembering and understanding. This doesn't mean remembering has no value. It has a value. If I don't know where I put my car keys, I wouldn't know where is my house key. So everyone is important, but the higher domains are extremely important. You will see most, most of the teaching done in developing countries is in the lower domains, understanding and remembering. From applying onwards is done very little. Higher order thinking skills. Why those higher domains are important? Because if you will see here, creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying. Analyze, evaluate, create, apply. These are all higher uh, order thinking skills referred to as HOTS. It's a concept in education. And it says examples are critical thinking skills, analyzing, reasoning, comprehending, application, evaluation, making a judgment, taking a decision. All to do all this, we need this. Higher order thinking involves learning complex decision-making skills through which we apply a concept, we analyze a concept, we analyze the situation, we evaluate, uh, we evaluate information, we create new knowledge, we solve problems as in uh, problem solving, we think critically, because now people are not thinking critically. If people start thinking critically, this world will be a better place to live. And higher order thinking skill is more valuable to learner because it can be used in situations which are very different from which learner learned it. What we'll teach them in our schools and colleges, if we teach them higher order thinking skills, our students will be able to use them outside the school or college in the real world and not that just now but forever 
and they can use it to learn new skills. In other words, we can say higher order thinking skills that a student learns in the classroom can be used in real life anywhere, anytime in the world. And if we compare, see, Bloom's taxonomy, creating, evaluating, analyzing, all three are on the top. Applying is in the middle, applying is in the middle. Higher order thinking skills are gained, understand and remember at the bottom. So if you just remember this, keep it at the back of your mind as a teacher, when you are designing learning tasks for your students, you would know in which domain you are operating, in which domain your student will be operating while trying to complete this task. So you can remember just this word, ruap -ENEC. It's an acronym, R for remembering, U for understanding, AP for applying, AN for analyzing, E for evaluating, and C for creating, ruap -ENEC. We cannot change, though there are two A's, but we cannot bring analyzing down, we cannot take applying up. This goes like this. Okay, any question then, if there is no question, then only I'll go on example, but I want to take a break and just tell me any questions so far. Participants can ask their questions through the chat box. <laughs> any question? because then we'll get into the practical aspect. Participants can ask your questions. No question, then we go. Why keep it silent? Okay, so what we'll do is we we'll look at some examples where all these three are integrated. Good, good. Okay, let us. Can I can I ask a question? Yes, sir. You can ask. Yeah, please. Uh, thank you, madam. Yep. What, what, what's, what's the level for uh, arts and science college students? Either it be from K1 to K3 or uh, can we go up to K4 or K5, K6? Like that. For engineering college students, we can move up to K6. Then what about uh, arts and science college students? For the level that because I'm not part of this college, so I wouldn't be able to answer that question. What we can do is we'll keep it to the end. We'll ask the people who work in that college. Is that okay with you? Is that okay with you? Uh, okay, okay, thank you. I'll ask, I'll ask the question personally, please. please. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. So this example is like you can, if a teacher is teaching botany or home science or English, you talk about fruit, something so simple because I have chosen extremely simple examples because I don't know what subjects which teacher is teaching. So let us say teacher A gets into the classroom and she uses uh, a book or a chart and she uh, teaches the names of the fruits. She brings five fruit and she shows them to the students. So she's already trying to go a little beyond the road, learning road teaching. Now teacher B, B, she brings five fruit to the class. She introduces the names of the fruit. She focuses the students' attention on their color, size, and texture. And when she does that, see, what do the students learn? They learn to appreciate nature, they learn to about diversity of living things. Then she tells the students that fruit change color as they ripe. Unripe fruit are either green or dull in color. 
they taste bland, sour, or even bitter. They become sweet when they're ripe. So she is giving them extra information how how fruit becomes sweet because sugar is made. Then she cuts all fruits except grapes, and she tells them that cutting fruit you just cannot. Uh, I mean, apple is cut differently than uh, apple and guava are cut differently than orange, and of course watermelon is cut differently. So there are ways to cut. And then she focuses the student's attention on the inner look of the fruit. Again, she's, the student is learning to appreciate nature and about the diversity of living things. She even cuts some grapes and she'll see what's inside. These are the seeds. If we put them in the soil, they'll grow. She cuts the small pieces of fruit, except grapes, of course, and puts a toothpick in each piece. And then she tells that some people in North India eat fruit with salt. So they're learning about other cultures. And she instructs the students that she's going to offer it to them. But uh, even if they don't like yeah, it, they should not spit it on the floor. So she's teaching them uh, etiquette. Thank you, madam. Just, and after I... eating, she says, oh, don't spit out what, what, what's, what's the learn for uh, speak on the floor and in college students? And being collected in the trash bin. Either it now, be from K1 to K3 or uh, can we go up to K4 or K5, K6? For engineering college students, we can move up to K6. Then what about... Uh... So I wouldn't be able to answer that question. As she added, what we can do is we'll keep it to the end. We'll ask the people who work in the yes. college. Is that okay with you? And, uh, We'll make use of live chat yes, that okay because you. when uh, you op oh, participants okay, open okay. their, chosen mute their mind, extremely the simple example because I don't know what subjects which I think it is teaching okay. that way. So let us say teacher A yes gets now into the classroom B. and she uses uh, a book or a chart and she uh, teaches the names of the fruit. <laughs> Now let us take, she brings five fruit to the class. She introduces the names of the fruit. Another she focuses the students' attention ah, I want on to ask color, this question, size okay. and texture. Can a KG and teacher she does that, teacher what do KG teacher to learn? Mm -hmm. They learn KG teacher, yes or no? Nature, she does the same to case teacher, bland, what teacher sour, or even bitter. They, can she they do become it? sweet when they write. With a small so she's sugar. giving them extra information how, how fruit becomes yes sweet. No? Sugar is made, then she cuts all fruits except grapes, and she, and of course, watermelon is cut differently. So there are ways to cut. And then she focuses the students' attention Any answers on the inner look of the fruit. Again, she's, the student is learning to appreciate nature and mm -hmm. about the diversity of living things. A teacher she will cut some grapes and she'll see teacher what bees and then she way of teaching some people in North pedagogy eat for fruit KG with salt. The students so they are learning about other cultures. Students. Can she and she it? instructs the students yes yes that no. she is going to offer it to them. Yes, no. but uh, yes, she can. Even if they don't, that is the thing. If you know these the tools, floor, so you can adjust. Uh, thank you, madam. And after what will be she says, different oh, no, is the learning. What, what, what's, what's the learning for, uh, on the floor? But you can use the same same pedagogy to teach KG students and also to higher level students. I'm not saying that you can do it with all skills, with all tasks. But there are many where you can do it. Let us take how. This is one of the very famous poems of Wordsworth. English. And this is part of your college syllabus, actually. And it says, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over rails and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that mm -hmm. shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. They stretch in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. Okay, I'll give you one minute. You can use read these two stanzas also. The waves beside them dance. But they outdid the sparkling babes in glee. 
A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, the flesh upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude, and then my heart with pleasures, with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Now my question is, if we are teaching this poem, can an English teacher involve teaching some of the 21st century skills by taking daffodils to the class, like the other teacher has taken some fruit to the class, making the students smell their fragrance, oh, they smell so beautiful, and tell them about their significance in certain cultures. For example, daffodils have a huge importance in Chinese New Year. Has anyone seen daffodils? Just tell me yes or no. Has anyone seen daffodils? Anyone seen? No. No, yes, no, anything? Yes. No, ma'am, no. Ma no, okay. Yes. These are the daffodils. And these are grew for Chinese New Year. Just see how beautiful they are. And once you enter the house, the whole house is so fragrant, so beautiful. Now my point is, if we keep teaching poem like this, like this, without letting our students know it like this, isn't it sad? Isn't it sad? So example three, subject. You can teach any, you are teaching any language. So the objective, the teacher's objective is writing in the past tense. She's teaching writing in the past tense using simple past, past continuous, past perfect, and used to. Because I saw you are still teaching uh, college students how to write correct tenses. So what this teacher did, two tasks are there. She asked her students to interview your mother about what life was like for her when she was your age and write a report in 500 words. And she had another task, interview your mother and grandmother about what life was for them when they were your age and write a report in 500 words. Now see what all she has added here. Instead of just asking them to write sentences in using past tense or something very boring, she has created so much importance. So she has included so many skills for her students. She has included communication skills because the student has to go home and talk to her mother or to grandmother. And they will learn how to appreciate mother as an individual, not just as mother, wife, cook, house cleaner, etc. We really need to educate our societies about the value of a mother as a human being. Now, knowing grandparents through mother, even if the students are not um, interviewing grandmother, they'll know something about grandparents through the mother. So there is the tradition which will be passed on. Learning about family and local traditions. Maybe mother came from some other uh, part of India or some other country, so they learn about that. Awareness of changes occurring in the cities and towns. This may involve information about migration from rural, rural to urban areas or from urban to 